welcome, my friends. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by once again as we sample some more great tasting American craft beers with Dr. Dave. Outstanding. Now, for our sampling pleasures and tasting delights today, I have another beer that I picked up on my road trip to New Jersey. Yes, indeed. Never seen this around this part of the country. The Upper Pass Beer Company. Now, this is contract brewed by Von Trapp out of Stowe, Vermont. So that means that someone came up with the recipe, but they just don't have the brewing equipment. So they contracted with Von Trapp, and Von Trapp brought it to market. But this is the cashmere hoodie. And it says right on the front here, it's 5.3% alcohol and 36 IBUs. And this is described as a pale ale. Now, the date stamp on the bottom says that this is 141 days old. Well, that's partly my fault because, hey, I was back from the road trip a couple months ago, but I just didn't open up the beers. What can I tell you? Yeah, you know, it gets busy around here. Hey, with three cats, it keeps me busy. We're going to use this lovely Libby glassware that's laser etched, and it will build up some foam in a hurry if you're not paying attention. Now see right there, it doesn't look like much, but if you go ahead and agitate, it'll build up. I don't care what kind of beer it is, it'll build up some foam. Doesn't mean it's going to last, but it'll build it up in a hurry. Now this is slightly hazy. Wow, that's got some lively carbonation. That could be the laser etching though. Oh man, that smells lovely. Oh, that's going to be a good one, I think. I see pay ale, a pale ale can sit around, better watch what I'm doing there, it's a new table. <laughs> a pale ale can sit around a little bit longer than a Indian pale ale because they're not as hopped up. Yeah, they have hops, but they're not as hopped up, and they're not intended to be a hop bomb like most IPAs are. And I'm talking about a West Coast style IPA, not a New England style IPA. Yeah, but this uh, this head has uh, held up. It's rather lovely indeed. It's off-white, beautiful golden color on this beer. It's semi-hazy, lightly carbonated, and it smells lovely. Oh, I'm getting some lovely malts in there. Mm, I think this is going to be a winner. Hey, let me thank the brewers at the... Upper Pass Beer Company for all the hard work they did to bring this beer to market. So many thanks to you and thanks to everyone who's watching at home. Cheers! Mmm, that's pretty tasty. Some lovely malts in here. Mmm, bam. A little bit of citrus in there. A little bit of citrus. Not a whole else lot though. Mmm. Yeah, it's kind of strange because you smell a little bit of tropical fruit up front, but there's no taste at all to the tropical fruit. Now, that could be due to age, but I doubt it. A lot of times I'll drink a beer, and so will my friends, and we'll swear there's something in there. And we talk to the brewer, and the brewer says, no, no, that's not in there. <laughs> but I tell you, your brain tricks you sometimes to think that, hmm, that smells a certain way, and then your brain tells you that it tastes that way. And there's no uh, no ingredients in there like that. I know that sounds strange, but you drink enough beer and you'll know what I'm talking about. No doubt about that. Mm. Just some lovely malts in there. Very lovely. So it could be, it's possible that because of the age of this beer, the hops have diminished slightly, and what we have left is more malt than anything else, because malts generally don't go anywhere, unless the beer is extremely old. So 141 days. Now, we're coming up on, what, five months? That's got some time on it. The only beers that really last five months without deterioration are barrel-aged stouts or anything that's barrel-aged. Uh, Pilsner slash lager, they can go that long. But anytime you start getting into the five month area, you're in dangerous territory there because the 
the flavors and the aromas that the beer once had are starting to dissipate. This is still a drinkable beer, though. There's nothing wrong with this beer. It's just more malt than anything else. And, uh, you know, if you like a malty beer, then go for it. Just put your stir stick in here. And uh, you got to watch what you're doing, though, on an etched glass. You see how it's rising up? All you have to do is put your stick back in there, and it'll stop it from rising over the top. There you go. Tip from Dr. Dave. How about that? Hey, I learned that from a bartender. Yeah, but it's a, a very lovely looking beer and mostly malts. Got some citrus in here and that's about it. Unoffensive. It's unoffensive. People would drink this and they, they wouldn't think twice about it. It's, it's uh, not like it's a, a triple IPA that checks in at 12% uh, alcohol by volume and 100 IBUs. And it's so dry and bitter, you don't know what to do with yourself. This is not like that. Yeah, I wish I could get a fresh one. But like I said, this is from New Jersey. And I don't know if I'll get back there or not. But it's a decent beer, as is. It's decent. Very good indeed. And I'm betting fresh. It's even better. The Upper Pass Beer Company. And remember, it's contract brewed by Von Trapp out of Stowe, Vermont. So there you have it, my friends. There you have it. Hey, life is short. Be happy. Try new things like this beer here. Just make sure you're not like Dr. Dave and let it sit around for two months before you drink it. Drink fresh. I don't care what the beer is. Beer is fresh best. Of course, like I said, you can age them. It's known as cellaring. And some beers do get better over time like a fine wine. But with this style, you don't want to keep it any longer than uh, is necessary. With that in mind, until we meet next time, here's wishing all of you the very best goodbyes. And as always, cheers. <laughs>